Hey, how goes it? Welcome to Sports Center here at Nashua High School South, and thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Adam Buskey, alongside Tom Croco. Tom, let's get to the conversation everybody has been talking about. It's been a long season for the Patriots. Many ups, many downs. Many. But one thing that will always be remembered about this season is that they are Super Bowl 49 champions. If you missed it, then now you get a chance to revive it. And no one better to ask than my good friend Tom here. Now, after seeing the way Seattle lost that game, what are your thoughts? Busky, how are we doing? Pretty good. You know, the way Seattle lost that game is very heartbreaking to the fans, to the organization, to the players. You know, the way they lost, it's not the, the fact that they lost, it's the way they lost. And to end it with a Malcolm Butler unpredictable interception right there, a guy that no one's even heard of, is unreal. Now, the fact that they didn't hand it off to Marshawn Lynch or something else, I mean, they could be standing here as your Super Bowl champions. Many Patriots fans wouldn't even be wearing their Super Bowl champion shirts if it weren't for Malcolm Butler. The way they lost it is the worst part about knowing that they lost it. And even before that interception, the way it set up was Jermaine Curse's unbelievable, unbelievable. circus catch. <laughs> Nobody could have ever thought that's, that. That's revisions of the Giants' loss. That was even <laughs> worse. That was even worse than the helmet catch. Nobody ever could have imagined a ball just jumping off of your leg and then back into your hands like that. I mean, I remember sitting on the couch just saying, oh, incomplete, and I turned around, like, what? It's complete. You know? every, so, even, even Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth, who were shocked. doing the Super Bowl on NBC, it, it looked like it was a drop ball, but all of a sudden it was just in the hands of Jermaine Curse, yep. which set up the play for Russell Wilson to be on the line and then give the ball to Marshawn Lynch to run, and yeah. he was stopped at the one-yard line. And it's either give the ball to Marshawn Lynch or you let Russell Wilson keep it, an option or whatever, and get it in the end zone. That was just a bad play call. Um, as Scott Zolak, the second voice of the New England Patriots with Bob Sochi, said that was probably the worst play call in Super Bowl history. Now, you predicted Brady to throw two interceptions before the game. If Wilson didn't throw that pick and the Seahawks ended up winning that game, could you blame the New England Super Bowl loss on the one and only TB12? Yes, and here's the, my reasons for it. Brady threw two interceptions in that game, which I did predict in the pregame show. Um, and when he threw those two picks, one of them was in the end zone. So it's either they could have got three points out of that or they could have got a touchdown. The other pick was at the 50-yard line in the second half of the game, and it was their first possession of the second half, and it was turned over at the 50-yard line, and Seattle ended up scoring on that. So if you take those away... That's one less touchdown for the Seahawks, and that's probably some points on there for the Patriots. And the score would have been different than what the ending was, 28 to 24. Now, Marshawn Lynch must have been thinking in his mind, give me that ball. I want that ball so I can run it for the end zone. What does this do for Marshawn Lynch? You know, it, it puts negativity in his mind. He, the Seahawks want him back. They've offered him a contract extension. And... You know, not giving it to him, I don't know what's going through his mind. I heard reports that he was actually laughing at Pete Carroll. So I know he doesn't have – he's not your favorite player, but it definitely goes through his mind, do they even have trust in me? Do they, do they even want me if they didn't give me that, that handoff? He very well could end up in a new uniform next year due to that, to that one play because they didn't give it to him. And that's wow. just that's – my, that's my belief. So do you think he might change his – Food of choice instead of Skittles on the sidelines after all that? Possibly. You possibly. He could go to M&M's. Oh, boy. Oh, that's even worse for you. <laughs> so now to wrap up the Super Bowl 49 talk, what are some of your final thoughts and your key points from when you were watching that game? You know, first off, let's just remember, Bill Belichick always defers. Coin toss, they decided um, Seattle won the coin toss. New England got the ball first. Seattle opened up the second half with the, t with the field goal. New England opened up to the, about the 50-yard line, and they had to punt it. So I think that definitely is one of those things where the Patriots aren't used to. They're always used to getting the ball first in the second half. So that's, that could be one. Uh, number two, they could have won. They could have lost that game if the Seahawks decided to hand it off to Marshawn Lynch or Russell Wilson put it in the end zone somehow. That one play is the reason why Seahawks fans aren't celebrating a Super Bowl championship with the organization. And my third and final thought is Brady – Going into the next season, you know, he's got to cut down on those interceptions in football games because through the second half of this year until the Super Bowl, Brady was always throwing those stupid interceptions 
at the end of the first half and random, like random spots. So is it age catching up to Brady that we found out finally? Yes, I think so. Probably one of the greatest quarterbacks, one of the. I'm not saying that he's one of the greatest quarterbacks, but he's got to cut down on those if he wants to come back. Well, that could be talks, you know, once he retires. Because those, well, the interceptions could have costed them the game. That's. I mean, there could be even talks, too, right down the road if he is going to be the greatest quarterback of all time once he retires. We, we never know, and time could tell. That's the thing. I think a lot of people are always saying, you know, well, Joe Montana is better than him, and you got all these, all the respect, all these great quarterbacks that have ever played in the game. But right now, to me, Tom Brady and Joe Montana hold number one. I, don't, I can't choose. It's so close. <laughs> Well, as we wrap up the Super Bowl 49 talk, when we come back, we will get you ready for Blackout Weekend versus North and the boys and girls basketball teams. Big win versus Salem. That all comes to you next. <sighs> the students of Nashua High School South don't daydream of success in class. They raise their chins high and walk forward to what they want to achieve. That's why in our house, the Panthers roar and our students soar. People don't play sports because it's fun. Ask any athlete, most of them hate it, but they couldn't imagine their life without it. It's part of them, the love-hate relationship. It's what they live for. They live for the practices, cheers, long bus rides, invitationals. Countless pairs of different types of shoes, water, Gatorade, and coaches you hate but appreciate. They live for the way it feels when they beat the other team. And knowing the two extra sprints they run at practice were worth it. They live for the way they become a family with their team. They live for the countless songs they sing in their head while training all those hours. They live for the competition. They live for the friends, the practices, the memories. The pain, it's who they are. It's who we are, we are Panthers. Welcome back to South Sports Center. Let's talk some high school basketball, Croco. Uh, you and I do a play-by-play -play coverage for the boys game. Uh, against Salem earlier this week on our radio show. Uh, any thoughts on that big win? Big win for the team. You know, it was against a 2-8 and eight Salem team. They were 4-5 and five going in, and they had the chance to go 5-5 five and five, exiting the game, and they did. So now they're 500 on the season. They opened up the game great. They came out, looked fast, making their shots, um, limiting on turnovers, limiting on fouls. But then the biggest change for me is the second half. So when the fouls started going up, they started slowing down in tempo, they were missing some shots. You know, they were just, everything went downhill the second half. And I remember me and you were saying, it's pretty much over at the end of the third quarter, entering the fourth. You know, they were, both teams were putting in their, their bench players, and we were expecting a win for himself. And then they cut it from 18 to about nine. They cut it in half. So uh, both teams were getting feisty. Self was getting nervous, and Salem was getting, oh, wow, we still have a chance. So they had to put their starting five back in. And I think that's just the big thing for me is that you've got to play a full game. You can't let the, you know, even though you have a big, you have a big lead in any type of game, whether it be the first quarter, second third quarter, third quarter, or fourth quarter, and we both agree that the fourth quarter is the quarter you have to win the most. You can't slow down in any which way. You've got to play 100% for 100% of the game. That's right. And what we talked about all, all this season really is win every quarter. Every quarter has to be won, just like with the girls team. Uh, as they went up to Salem. Uh, maybe there could have been some quarters that they, they should have won, but it all came down to the fourth quarter. And the girls' team, as they went up to Salem and they had a very good victory, uh, as you tell them all the time, as you are their, as you are their motivator, as you are the guy that really gets them going, um, you know, what are some of the things you tell them? You know, <laughs> one of the things that we do is I get, I get them in a circle, and I tell them, listen, you know, you know, you got to play your heart out. You got to play for every one of each other today. And, you know, this could be your last game. You never know. Always play every game to the fullest. I've actually got, like, a, we got a little team motto. It's called never give up, a term that I like to use a lot. Everybody knows that term. Everybody, probably. everybody knows that term. That's right. And it means a lot. You know, when you think of never give up, it means to keep playing, keep playing 100%, no matter what the score is, no matter who you're playing, no matter who you're playing against. I get them, you know, we do the circle, we get them hyped up. And it's the excitement on their face, they're excited. They go out there and play basketball. And I think excitement is the best part about the game because when you're excited, you can play, you can play really good. You can do something really special. So, so when we are here uh, this week for the boys game, 
Who would you say is your MVP in that game? Uh, man, I'd have to say Kevin Janow. You know, he's lights out. You know, he came out, he had the first couple shots for self, putting kids on the floor with his, uh, <laughs> with his little jukes and stuff. And I mentioned that in the post-game show in our, in our little interview with him. And he said, you know, I've just been playing as a kid with my friends and, you know, i just gotten better as it goes. And he just played lights out that game. You know, he's playing some, getting many rebounds, uh, making his shots. And he really, he's impressing a lot of people this year. Yeah, and absolutely, as you have been hearing about uh, our post-game, pre-game shows, as we have a lot of the high school players on our show, we do radio talk show on our NHSS Center page uh, on Twitter. You can click on the tweet as we upload it from our Sp Spreaker app. You can click on the play button and you can listen to us live. Is that why we have some of the boys on the team uh, from our show? Uh, we'll be getting girls on our show as well as we're going to be doing the North-South basketball game we between the girls and the boys. That'll be very exciting. It's a lot like 98.5 The Sports Hub. Uh, we do our own Crockle and Bus shows, a lot like Belgrin Maz, you know, those shows like that, or shows across the country. And uh, we just talk sports. We talk our opinions, and we want to thank our fans for everything. You know, none of this will be happening without you guys. So Absolutely. we thank you guys. We do our own talk shows. We do play-by-play. -play, we write stories. We do tweets, live tweets throughout the day for the sports news. Get on on the action. That's right. So, as now we veered away from the boys, as I mentioned, the girls in that previous segment right there. Um, Krakow, what has their win done for them against Salem to help them throughout the rest of the year so far right here? Well, last couple of games of the season coming up, it's a big stretch for them. It's, it's motivation, I want to say. You know, typically when a team wins a game, it helps them throughout the rest of the season. It, you know, it's not throughout the rest of the season, but it gives them some momentum going into the next game. So just keep playing the way they play. You know, good, some good defense, limit the turnovers. Um, you know, we weren't actually at the game, but just hearing from what we heard, um, it was a good win for the girls. Just got to keep it up. Uh, limit the turnovers, like I said, and you'll be fine. Get your shots right and just have fun out there. So going on the road and watching them and being their manager yes. when you go on the road with them, who would you say would be your MVP for this season so far on this girls team? Man, I can't, <coughs> I can't really put that to finger. You know, they've all been playing great this year. <clears throat> but I want to say that it's, it's a team effort. You know, I gave you your single game MVP. I don't really want to give you your full season MVP. It's a team effort. You know, if one player has a great game, the whole team has a great game. So i got to give it to the team. I can't just give it to one player. But, you know, it's really special being out there. They're, they're a great team. When they put it together, they're a great team. You know, they may have their losses. They may have their wins. But when they win, they typically play some great defense. They limit their teams to about 30 points. They just have fun out there, and it's just a, it's a great time being there. Absolutely. So let's wrap up the basketball talk with this question. Will we see a parade at the end of the season for either, for either basketball team? You know, I would have to say yes. <clears throat> I want to say... Um, I know a lot of people are probably saying, wow, that's, that's surprising, but it's not. Because when these teams win games, and we've noticed it, they either win big or when they lose, it's, it's history. But or they go home. Yeah, exactly. They win, they go big, lose, they go home. I think that the boys' team is very capable of doing it. They, I think they've only lost like two games in the last month, yep. something like that. They're very hot right now. Um, they can really, they're competing with every team that they're playing. But the only one game that, that's really in their heads is Spalding, and I'm sure they want nothing more than to play Spalding again. Absolutely. But, yes, the boys' team and the girls' team has a chance. Keep plugging in and just keep, keep clicking. Click, 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 keep clicking, and uh, you'll be good. So definitely they both have a chance. I can see the boys hosting a parade on Main Street down here in Nashua. That would be awesome. That would be that'd awesome. Be, that'd be great. It would be great for the school, too. So speaking of parades, um, there was one on Wednesday that I went to for the New England Patriots. Um, I know you're a Steelers fan, but... Yeah, we'll keep that out. We'll, they'll be there next year. You think so? Count on it. Count on it. Wow. But tell us a little, about the, a little bit about the parade. Uh, that parade was exciting. I've never seen a Vince Lombardi trophy that close. Right, up, right about 10 feet away from me. Uh, just like you could just grab it, you could just give high fives to Gronkowski, to Belichick and, and Brady. They were, I mean, Julian Edelman was. No, we actually on the show. we actually saw Bill Belichick smiling. 
Oh, come on. You always you see know, that guy smiling. You know when you see Bill Belichick smiling, it's a good reason that they did something good. But it was great to see all the players, you know, celebrating. You know, Pittsburgh will probably meet them opening night. Might ruin the parade. But congratulations to the New England Patriots. And that's how you do it. And that's right. Must have been a good time. It was awesome. Great time. So. And it pretty much defines their season. It does. It does. You got so many New England fans that are going to come down there. They're going to enjoy their time. Uh, it just shows how many devoted fans we have in the Boston area, New England area, regardless. Yep. Um, it just goes to show you that you know this team has a family. It's not just a team. Mm -hmm. It's more than a team. It's a family. So your thoughts on the final thoughts on the show? That's. It was a great show right here. Yes. We did a great job. So that is all for today's show. And I'm Adam Buskey. I'm Tom Crocco. Thank you for tuning in.